Hello and welcome to another OneFlow tutorial. Today I will show you the analysis tools which are integrated in the parameterizing software PASO. Here you can see the main screen of this PASO software. On the left side all inputs, then the signal flow through the device and on the right side all outputs. In this main screen you can see every measured value from the device. For example, the command value. In our example, the command value is a current signal. If we change this command value, you see here the real value which is on the device. This value will be transferred here to a value in the real unit from the system. Possible units are millimeter, bar, liter per minute or user-defined units. In our application, we are working with a position clone, uh, control and because of that, we use millimeters. The value after the command value fixed is my command value. As long as no command value fixed is active, it's the value coming from my external input. If we activate, for example, input 6, now I have activated a fixed command value and the command value internally now is the defined value, in our example, 200 millimeters. If we activate input 7, then it's 400 millimeters because we have defined a command value fixed from 400 millimeters. If no input is active, no command value fixed is selected, then we are working with the external command value. The value after the ramp generator is also our command value, but calculated with the adjusted speed in the ramp generator. If we change the command value on this side, also the output value here will be changed, but calculated with the adjusted speed. We have the same for the feedback signal. In our application, the feedback signal is a voltage signal. And here you can see the real signal coming from our position sensor to the device. Also, this signal will be compared, uh, will be transformed to the value in the unit. Also here, millimeters. Here you can see the deviation between the command value and the feedback value. And this value generates then a command value for our solenoid driver. If the control deviation is positive, we activate solenoid driver 1. If the control deviation is negative, we activate solenoid driver 2. The output signal here depends on one side on the on the value from the control deviation, but also of the parameters set, set here in the controller. A detailed description about all the settings of these parameters you will find in other tutorials on our channel. You see now, according to the control deviation here, solenoid A or solenoid 2 will be activated. And we can see here our system works very well. One or the other solenoid always is activated. We have other analysis tools, for example, the value window. Here you can see additional values, for example, the supply voltage, which we have on the device. And another overview about all digital inputs or digital outputs. If we activate, for example, again, digital input 6, you can see that here. If we activate input 7, you can see that here. Another analysis tool is the signal recording. With the PASO software, you can record four signals at the same time. To define which signal we like, you can go to the signal assignment and here you can select the desired signal. Every signal you see in the main screen, you can also select here. 
for example, the command value, input command value, the value after the command scaling. In our example, we use the value of the ramp generator, that's the command value, and the output value feedback scaling, that's the feedback signal. The start condition I set to directly, and the record time we set to eight seconds. I, we will record eight seconds. If we start now the recording, we can see what happens on the system. The blue line is the command value, the red line is the feedback signal. We can see that the system moves, but we have a, a big deviation between command and feedback value. We can change now some parameters of the controller and we can go back to the signal recording and look which influence this change of the parameter has. And now we see the control deviation is, is much smaller than before. With this signal recording it's very easy to have a look the influence of changing some parameters on the system. Another analysis tool is the individual values. In this window, you can define certain signals, also from different channels, which are interesting for you. For example, on channel 1, if you click with the right mouse uh, to, to the value you like, add to individual values, maybe also the feedback signal, also a signal from another channel, right click, and if you open again the indel values, you see now all these selected values direct in this window, also from different channels, very clear in this window. If the system detects an error, for example, a cable break on the feedback signal, we can simulate this cable break. I switch off the feedback. Now you can see there is an error on the device. Everything is red. And you can go to analysis diagnostics. Now you can see in real text the problem you have on the card. Which error we have, a description of the error, why this error can happen, and what you have to do to remove the error. In our example, we have to readjust, the, reconnect the feedback signal, switch off and on the card, and now the card can work again. Another analysis tool is the operating hours. You can see how many hours your device has already worked. And you can also see the allocation of all inputs and outputs. For example, digital inputs, which input is used for which function. You can look every input to the functions. For example, also the analog inputs, which input is used for which function. All these analysis tools are available for every card, for the SD7 card, for the DSV electronic, for the PD2 electronic, and also for the MD2 mobile electronic. If you have more questions, please contact us or have a look to the other tutorials on this channel. Thank you for looking and see you.